Welcome Rangers fans to another edition of our Midweek Coaches Show and uh, as we do each week we'll recap uh, not just football but all of our sports uh, here at Smithson Valley, what's, what has happened, what, what is going to happen and uh, we'll start with last week's varsity football game because uh, certainly uh, we, we got the result we were after after being disappointed in a close one, uh, one point loss uh, week one, we went on the road. We had to go a two and a half hour road trip all the way to Colleen and uh, to make it worse, when we got off the bus, we had to play Harker Heights, a quarterfinalist team from a year ago in the 6A playoffs. So, uh, uh, but we did what we had to do to win and um, uh, we got a 27 to 10 win over a, a quality team on the road, as we said. And uh, uh, Coach Westford, we'll start with you. Uh, Life's better when you win. Yes, sir. Yeah, the air was a little sweeter after the game this week. It was. Coach Hill, uh, uh, food tasted better after oh, yeah. the game. <laughs> that Whataburger hit nice. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we did what we had to do. Like I said, it, when you play teams the caliber of Reagan and a week ago and Harker Heights, teams who, who, uh, who playing at such a high level, we, our players quickly realized that everything cannot go right. Uh, there'll be a series, maybe whole stretches of times when things aren't going well. But the, the great lesson there is you, you gain that understanding and then you also do what you have to do to make things right. I think sometimes when things come easy, you get a little bit of a false sense of security and I don't think anybody's accusing us of that. But uh, tickled to get that win. Uh, and uh, let's, let's start with the defense, Coach Westifer. Uh, what stood out right there uh, against Harker Heights last Friday? I thought the best thing we did was created some takeaways. Uh, you know, we focus on that every week. We uh, spend a lot of time practicing takeaways, uh, you know, creating turnovers, and we got four. Uh, yeah. And that was that was huge. Our goal is to get at least three every game, and we accomplished that goal. And I thought our kids did a good job of tackling, uh, which helped create those takeaways and helped limit their rushing yards. So no doubt. Now, is slowing there a, down the run and creating the takeaways. Is there a play that sticks out as maybe a, one of the top defensive plays of the week? I, one that sticks out to me, we brought Maynard on a blitz and looped – Hudson Woods off him and got some good pressure on the quarterback and Zach Genrick uh, got the, his first pick of the year uh, on a nice interception on the sideline. Right, one of those four takeaways as you mentioned and uh, one key in the turnover battle is takeaways as we mentioned, we have four of them and then the flip side of that is your offense taking care of the ball and you hope every drive ends in a touchdown but that's not real. But at the very least, you take care of the football, punt them back deep and let's play good defense again. Coach Hill, we didn't turn the ball over and what else stood out uh, about our offense the other night. Yes, sir. You know, protecting the football was key, especially after week one. Um, you know, we had we had a takeaway. Um, having the four on defense helped out a lot, and then we took care of the ball, played smart. Uh, got the quick game going early on. Ryland and Brody Day had some connections with some quick throws and right. Danny McBride on the blocks. Um, and then what we got going in the second half really was the run game. Uh, Kate Spradling rushed for about 125, and Brad Sowersby rushed for about 75, 80 yards in our offensive line played great. It just seemed as the night went on, they got more physical and um, were really taken over up front and that helped us seal the deal. Any any plays stick out as maybe the, the play of the week offensively? Yeah, more so a drive. Uh, end of the first half, we got it back um, with about a minute left and we actually went on a two minute tempo style of drive and did a little no huddle. And that's something that we can practice and try to simulate a lot, but it's hard to do until you're in the game. And I thought our guys handled that well and we marched it down the field and actually scored uh, through a back shoulder fade to Jackson Duffy uh, at the end of the half. Yeah, and we get to go in up 14 points and uh, you know, then they come out in the second half, score their one and only touchdown to get it to seven and our offense matches that with another drive to get it back to 14. And then really begin to try to grind the clock. They're so explosive. Uh, we just felt like it, the longer we keep the ball, the better. Their offense isn't on the field and we put them together another long time consuming drive that resulted in a field goal. 17 point margin now, three score game. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, playing with a lead affords you the opportunity to do that. And now we'll turn to special teams. You talk about playing with a lead. Uh, we began to play with a lead after the very first play. Uh, Harker Heights won the toss, deferred their option to the second half. So they kicked off to us and Jackson Duffy uh, returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Got. Uh, a number of good blocks and he hit it up the left sideline over on their bench and scored, uh, putting us up seven to nothing. And certainly the game's not over against a quality opponent like that, but uh, uh, it, it made them play a little bit of catch up and that's what you always prefer. So uh, a big win against a quality opponent uh, on the road, but uh, 
as usual, you got to move on. And we got another big ball game coming back home, playing East Central this week. Uh, we'll talk about that game uh, when we get back. But first, we want to push it over to uh, uh, Melissa Miller, our assistant athletic coordinator and volleyball coach, talk about uh, the week behind and the week ahead in Ranger Athletics. Thanks, Coach Hill. Congrats to you guys on a huge win last week. We had a lot of other programs with some big wins last week, so let's get right into it. Uh, volleyball had a program sweep Friday. We hosted the Steel Knights. Uh, freshman B team, freshman A team, JV, and varsity were all victorious. Varsity lost the first set, came back to win the next three, um, showing a lot of improvement, a lot of heart, a lot of energy, working on that team chemistry as we get some players back from injury. So super excited about this coming week. We'll talk about that in a a little bit. Cross Country also competed this past weekend. They headed out to Austin for the Westlake Invitational. Our boys team overall finished sixth out of 25 teams. Um, our girls team, we just ran a couple of runners, but huge shout out to Mia Perez who took second overall. Mia had a fantastic season last year. Looking forward to a big year from her again this year. Uh, and water polo. Water polo kicked off last week. So they started district. They played Piper. Again, right now, we've only got a girls team. Um, unfortunately, they fell a little bit short, but they're energetic. They're enthusiastic. They're working hard. They're excited to get back out this Friday and continue district. And then our tennis team is in the middle of their district play. They had a tough district opponent in Bernie Champion um, last Tuesday. They ended up losing 7-11 very, very close, came down to the last three matches. Um, Coach Lawan did want to give a shout out to the team. He loves their energy. He said that the support that they have for each other, the cheering during the matches is fantastic. So if you haven't gotten a chance to get out and watch our tennis team, they're pretty exciting. Um, currently, they're six and five overall, two and one in district. They are in the middle of their district season. So um, let's take a look at what's coming up this next week in Ranger Sports. We've got a lot going on this week for the Rangers. Uh, let's start with volleyball. So tonight, volleyball will head to New Braunfels High for the last preseason game of the year. Uh, 9A, 9B, JV, and Varsity will all compete at 5.30 and 6.30. Again, that's at New Braunfels High School. If you're looking to find us here at Smithson Valley, we'd love to see you Friday. We open district against the Piper Warriors here at SV at 6.30. So a little bit before the football game, we're hoping you guys will come out, cheer us on in our district opener, and then when we finish, we can all walk down to football, watch them take on East Central. Um, cross Country competes this week in the Canyon Invitational. Now this race is held in Seguin and it's going to be a good preview because that is the course that our team will run during district. So a good chance for Coach Hall, Coach Nunley and those kids to get out there, see how they compete on that course, um, check that course out as they get ready for the district meet later in the month. Water Polo will continue their district season this Friday at Canyon Lake. So currently we've talked, we've got a girls team and we're so close to having a boys team. We had a couple of people come out last time. Um, let me know that they were interested. If there are any boys that are interested in Water Polo, we'd love to have you. Um, just come by my office, find Coach Duckworth. We need a couple more so that we can complete that boys team. But you can catch our girls this Friday at Canyon Lake. Good luck to them. And good luck to our tennis team as they continue their district season this Thursday versus Wagner here at SV. Um, they will also play Friday in a non-district game versus New Braunfels at Newcomb Tennis Ranch. So lots going on this week. Um, tennis, you've got volleyball on Friday. Speaking of Friday, we've got a little bit of Ranger trivia for you. Um, can you tell me who the quarterback was at East Central in 1977 and 1978? Think about it and we'll head back to Coach Hill. Well, that's a good question. Uh, that's been more than a few years ago, but uh, I'll give these guys first crack at it. Coach Coach Hill, who, who do you think that guy was? What was the year? The fall of 77 and the fall of 78. That sounds like a long time ago. I'll, my dad was there maybe in the 70s, your brother. Yeah. Uh, did they say good quarterback or did they just <laughs> yeah. say quarterback? So uh, there's was, there's that to consider. What is your call, that. Coach? Well, I was, I'm a little bit younger than that. But I remember the, the name sounds familiar. I think it is a hill, but I think it was a better quarterback. Wow. Yes. Wow. Maybe, yes. Uh, maybe an uncle. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Well, it was me back in the fall of 77, 78. We threw for 10, 12 yards a game or something like that at the time. <laughs> no, it, it was good times, uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, his dad, my brother, uh, and I both uh, played there. And, of course, my dad was the coach there for a long time. And... Uh, taking us to the East Central game this week. They're, they're coming here. I do have a history with them, of course, having grown up, went to school there. And, uh, but 
uh, not pulling for them this week. Uh, I always tell them I hope they go nine and one as long as they're on our schedule. But uh, um, they present, as each week we say, a different set of challenges. You know, the different style of offense, different style of defense, different personality, different culture. And uh, they're coming in here, and uh, they're, they're, Coach Westerfer, we'll start with you. Got to try to defend these guys. Uh, got some explosive players. They really do. Uh, they got a quarterback or that's very explosive, very dynamic, scrambles around a lot. Uh, they have a kid that's playing receiver that was their quarterback last year, was an excellent quarterback, excellent runner last year. He's made some huge plays, had three touchdown catches last week. Yeah. Uh, they got some solid running backs and, and a good old line. I mean, they, they're kind of balanced around, but they're trying to take what you give them, throwing right. the ball wise, and then they'll drop back and, and let the quarterback create some things off of scrambles. And, right. and he does a good job of keeping his eyes downfield and trying to throw the ball. Right. Different style of throwing game than we faced the last couple of weeks. And then defensively, the, they line up a little bit in a little bit of an odd configuration. Again, different than what we face. What do they bring to the table on the defensive side? Yeah, the thing that sticks out the most about their defense is it's a different look, but what they do, they do it extremely fast. They're trying to pressure the quarterback. They're bringing some pressure and blitzes off the edge. Um, they're secondary. They'll change up their looks, but they've got some speed. And that receiver that scored two, three touchdowns last week, he also plays safety. Um, he's really good in the run game. He'll fit off their linebackers. Um, they're aggressive and, and fast on defense. Okay, sounds like another uh, bit of poor scheduling by the head coach of Smithson Valley, but uh, it is what it is. Can't get out of it, so we're going to play them at home this Friday night at seven o'clock. Uh, we hope that uh, you'll be part of the crowd. Though it's Senior Parents Night, so uh, we're recognizing our seniors, our football seniors, our cheer, our dance, our band seniors. They'll all be recognized with, along with their parents in our pregame ceremony. And then, of course, we commence with the game. So uh, we hope you'll be here. Uh, we'll have this same show next week where we'll recap the game, hopefully with a good ending. But uh, we hope to see you Friday night. Until next time, thanks for being here. Go Rangers.